She's the only one I don't feel anyhow calling her by name because of the face. And you know I've been very wrong. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you very much. Okay. My name is Adiola Oshinaike, and I'm a social media manager and strategist for Shuzer. Uh, when we talk about social media, really, I really don't see what is there to teach. Is there anyone here who is not on Instagram? Anyone who is not on Facebook. <laughs> you don't go there, you're not active there, but you're active on Facebook. Okay. I think you have a community, yeah? You have a Facebook group. You have you you, you have to face. Okay. So is there anyone who is not on social media? No, 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 no one actually. And we found that social media is so dynamic that even with social media managers, I was telling uh, Mrs. Ousa, I was like, see, uh, I won't start going beyond social media because this, this change, this constant change, I don't even understand. You signed up um, a client to, to manage the Instagram account and Mark Zuckerberg wakes up one day and had IGTV. Are you supposed to charge separately for that now and say, Madam, now that we have IGTV, we are going to, you know, so it is so dynamic that things keep changing and we all find out ourselves, okay? We learn ourselves. So I really don't think that, you know, anyone can actually come and say, okay, this is, you know, what you should know about social media, but I'm going to try, okay? I'm just going to give it a try and I'm go going to tell you something that is beyond social media, that is going to be very, very useful for you if you've not heard about it before. And if you've heard about it, it's going to be a great reminder for you. And this is one thing that I want us all to keep in mind. If there's anything you're going to take away from here today about social media, kindly listen. This is, this is it. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm not going to give you the boring stuff because there are so, the statistics are out there. You can Google, you know, you can, how many, how many people use um, Facebook per day? How many times should I, should I post per day? You know you should post at least once, yeah? So those things are, to me, they're actually boring. So I won't throw all those numbers at you, but I will you know, show you what concerns you as writers, as Christian writers. Next slide, please. Okay. This is still some of the boring stuff, but please put it in mind. As at... Um, the time the studies were made, they usually do the studies every year. So I'm giving you probably 2017, you know, numbers. We have 800 million active users on Instagram, and there are over 95 million uploads per day. So meaning that as you're scrolling, content is flying. You know, people are uploading videos, they are uh, uploading photos, and information is you know, flying at the twinkle of an eye, you know, even more than the speed of lightning, okay? There's two points, over two billion people log into Facebook every single month. How many are we here? Like, multiply us and multiply, uh, you know, us and multiply and multiply and multiply. Us, us, by us, us, by us, us. You understand? So... If you really let it sink in, it is mind-blowing. That just one platform, sometimes I see it and I walk from home, I walk from my bedroom, and I look up and I'm like, 
Oh my goodness. You mean I was a sales, I was a medical sales rep for GSK for four years. And I would travel from state to state. I was covering four states. And I would tell myself, you mean I could be in my bedroom and be making even more than I was making while jumping from one state to the other. And some of my clients have never seen them. You understand? So over two billion people every single month. Oh my goodness, where are they coming from? Okay, logging into Facebook every single month. Okay? And the number of uploads is, is mind blowing. Have you seen the way people write on Facebook as if there's a competition? Yeah. Like, <laughs> sometimes I would read and I'll be like, guy, just go and write an e book. Why, why, what, what is this? There are so many gurus now on Facebook. I'm an expert on this. I'm a business coach. I'm a motivational, motivational coach. And people just write and write and write and write and write. And you get tired sometimes. Okay? And Twitter is even the worst. You upload on Twitter, I dare you to refresh. You won't, you won't find your tweet anywhere. Some other people's tweets, you know, had covered it up in milliseconds. So the, the, there's this thing just, it's just mind blowing. Next slide, this. So we can't close our eyes to it. Social media is here to stay. We've cried wolf enough. Oh, don't worry, when social media came, people were like, oh, they will get over it, uh, you know. But no, it is the new civilization. It is here to stay. It is not going. In fact, I tell people now, it is going to be the biggest monster you've ever experienced in life. Because it is getting wider and wider and wider. And we have a job to do. We have a great job to do as Christian writers. Okay? And these people are fighting each other. Facebook is out to kill every other social media platforms. In fact, in my heart of heart, I actually believe that Mark wakes up every day and says, who am I going to destroy today? That is the way I see him. And they are all fighting and fighting and fighting over just one thing that belongs to you. Okay? They are fighting over just one thing that comes to you effortlessly. You know, you take it for granted. This same thing is what makes Mark Zuckerberg worth $69 billion today. What you have sitting right there. It is the same thing that makes Twitter $30 billion if you were to buy Twitter today. Next slide, please. And that thing is content. Forget it. It is not people. It is content. Because these platforms wouldn't even exist without content. Okay, and when we talk about content, we're talking about all the videos, we're talking about you know the photos, we're, we're talking about everything you upload, and all these things actually originate from words. You have words, you have them boiling inside of you. Somebody was just Anu was just saying that she she usually gets so much that she can't sometimes she can't read. 69 billion dollar potential of course you won't be able to breed <laughs> you understand so and these words are so powerful next slide please that even the bible said it you know that death and life are in the power of the tongue what do you speak words and every single day, every single minute, you actually get this thing. Okay? You go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, and you just put it out there. No thoughts, no second thoughts. 
you just post. So, next slide, please. We as Christians, you as Christian writers, you can't afford to be on the fence. And you can't afford to listen to that little devil saying, nah, all they do is twerk on Instagram. What are you going there to do? You know, or you, you, you can't even afford to say, Twitter, no, 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 no. They go there, they cross each other out, and all these government people, politics, and those who don't even know football will be talking about one thing or the other like that. So you can't. It is time to actually listen to that voice that tells you to go out there. You know, and tell everybody you come in contact with about Christ, about the kingdom of God. Social media is the fastest way that you can, on social media, you can talk to about 1,500 people at once. If you were to go, you know, out to evangelize, how many hours would it take you to, to talk to 100 people? You know? But on social media, you can actually do that. You can talk to even more than that. So we can't afford to, you know, sit on the fence. It is, you know, high time we took this into our hands and say, okay, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to be deliberate, you know, about it. Okay. One pastor showed, um, he, he illustrated, he demonstrated something in his church. He was talking about when you were filled with the Holy Spirit. He had a glass, you know, of juice or something. The water was tainted. So, and he said, this is how, you know, the, the tainted water is how you feel when you don't have the Holy Spirit. Okay? That is how the world is right now without you, without your voice, without your words. It is now left to you to now start pouring Holy Spirit-inspired words into that world until everyone is filled and until everybody, you know, has heard about the gospel of Christ. Okay? So, now that we have decided, we have decided, I'm not giving you any choice. Yes or yes. Okay? So, now that we have decided to go out there, how do we go about this thing? Okay, it's not about um, using Instagram stories. It's not about you know doing polls and everything. This is about the principle why you're doing what you're doing. Next slide, please. So I'm going to be talking to you about this um, effect model. It's called Ida, without the hair. It's um, actually a model that was formulated in the um, 19th century, but it still works even today, okay? It still works even today. It's mostly used in marketing and advertising, but it's majorly about selling, but we're all selling. Who believes that? We're all selling. Forget that you write about Christ, you are Christians, we're all selling, okay? so. I'm here right now, standing here, talking to you. I'm selling myself, okay? Um, the former presenters, they've sold themselves. If I were to look for a publisher next time, I would remember them. Even your kids at home, they sell themselves. They have to either pout, cry, or do something to make, you know, you give them what they want. We are all selling. And so this model is going to, you know, help you do what you're supposed to do on social media. Next slide, please. So what does it mean? What is the A for? It is attention. Everything you do on social media, you have to be able to catch people's attention because we're scrolling like our lives depend on it. You know, we're scrolling, just scrolling and scrolling. 
Before, the attention span on social media used to be nine seconds, which is the same as that of a goldfish. And if you've seen a goldfish in an aquarium, you know that that was nothing. That nine seconds, it's actually nothing because it's darting from here to there, from here to there. But right now, it's even lower than that. Out of the um, two hours that an average person is going to spend on social media per day, the person is giving you eight seconds to stop him or her, you know, while scrolling. Just eight seconds. And within eight seconds, if you are not able to make me stop in my tracks and say, oh, who is that? You've lost me. Okay? So for everyone who is going to be looking at you, checking your pages, looking at what you're writing on social media, you have eight seconds to be able to even get them, to, be, to even have the chance to tell them about Christ. Eight seconds. So what can you do to grab their attention? Next slide, please. The first thing is your branding. We can't say because we are talking about Christ, then our pages are looking one kind of way. Please don't judge me by my own personal page. <laughs> okay? Okay? I'm behind, I'm behind other awesome, you know, business pages. So don't go to my personal page and say, yeah, see her. Okay? So your branding, okay? Everything from your logo to your fonts to your colors to the tone of voice that you use. Okay? Your branding has to be able to grab attention. Now, I'm not saying that you go all, you know, kind of way all funky and start using red with yellow and, you know, all that kind of thing. No. But even as Christian writers, there is a, you know, a target for you. There are certain kinds of people that you talk to, that you're writing for, yeah? You're not writing for everybody. I hope we all know that. So you need to be able to know your target market. If I am writing and I'm talking to probably female Christians who have kids, you may be talking to female Christians who are newly married. That is your niche. That is your target market. Now your job is to now go and find out how does that person want to be talked to? What colors appeal to that person? Do you understand? What fonts, with your fonts, your fonts can actually tell me, are you playful? Are you jovial? Are you talking to me like that? My grandma that will be the heck out of me to do what she wants me to do. Or the grandma that will spoil me rotten to do what she wants me to do. Yeah? So you have to be able to understand your target market to get your branding right. And there are easy tools that you can use for those. You can use Canva. Um, you can Google it. Okay, colors for, you know, such, such industry or such, such business and all that. You can use Adobe Color. You can even go on Pinterest and research. I like the fact that Chokwe mentioned that as a Christian writer, you, you have to be voracious in reading. You have to be voracious in researching. You have to be able to find things out. N uh, um, uh, an unbeliever shouldn't be the one coming to you to say, oh, do you know this and do you know that? Okay? We can't go out there into the world. I'm, I'm kind of passionate about this because I've seen so many business owners who can't even do a Google search. Can you imagine? All you have to do is go to the search bar and then type. What, however simply, whatever thing, Google will never tell you it is a stupid question. Yeah, that's true. And you'll find millions of other people who have asked the same question you've asked. And even similar questions. Okay? And then your graphics. You can't just go and pull anything from anywhere. Don't put any, anything from anywhere, okay? Make sure that your graphics, the, the, um, your, your photos are high quality. They are passing out the right messages. I can't be talking about cooking and then you are luring me with the video of a woman who is shaking a bomb bomb. Why? 
Okay, let make sure that your graphics is you know they are passing out the the right message. And there are tools you can use for that. Pixabay, Unsplash, you can go to all those places to get free to use photos. Don't go to Google and go and pull photos. You may get sued. Okay? We don't have enough money yet in, in the Christian kingdom to, to, to do that. We want to make more money so that we can convert all those people who like money. Yeah, you know. So, next slide, please. So the next one is interest. Now you've caught my attention. What is going to keep me on your page? Okay? What is going to keep me on your page? So you have to be able to give me something interesting through your captions. Don't just write. Don't just put caption for putting caption sake because Instagram asks you, what do you want to write? You know, when you post your, when you put up your photo, Instagram will ask you, you know, and some people will just load it with hashtags. It's very, it's, it's, it's not good, okay? So make sure that your captions, you're telling stories with your captions. Stories sell, hands down. Stories sell, and it is not difficult. It's something you already have inside of you, okay? Tell people about their pain points. When you eat issues that that really, really touch the heart. People listen to you. You get emotions. Emotions will always win. Will always win. If you're talking to people's logic, you're raising objections. But when it is something emotional, they don't argue with you. Okay? So avoid errors as much as possible. Look for words that your ideal client, your target client, your target customer, your audience wants to hear about. If I'm talking about skincare, or I'm, I have a product, uh, I'm talking about dry skin. Of course, I'm going to mention dry skin. I'm going to mention issues common to dry skin. So if you're writing to, um, let's say, women with children, and you've never mentioned diapers. You've me never mentioned hospital visits. Who are you? Are your children angels? Okay? So your bio, make sure that your bio, we know who you are in your bio, what to do, why people should follow you, and how. Okay? It's very simple. And you have just 150 characters to sell yourself. Let's know who you are, what you do, you know, why should people follow you, and how. How can they get to you? Next slide, please. And the D is desire. Now you've caught their attention, you've held their interest, you want to create a desire. And it's just a matter of giving more. Um, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, sorry, I have to mention him, even if he's not a Christian. Gary Vaynerchuk said, jab, 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 right hook. Yeah, you have to give, 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 give before you ask. You can't come to me because you're an awesome writer and say, I should come and buy your book and I'll just buy it like that. Hello? Why? Who are you? Where are you from? I must have been reading something from you. I must have been seeing you. I must have been interested. You must have created that desire in me. In fact, I should be asking, when is your next book coming out? Okay? And that is the desire. And you can achieve that if you're giving helpful information. If you're giving, you know, things that people actually want to read. Okay? You, that is how you can do that. By being unique. Make it about them. Don't be about me, 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 me. I went to Maryland. I went to this. I was at that. I went to this conference. I went to this, that. I went to this, this. They've never heard anything about themselves. You've never asked them a question saying, introduce yourself. How may I help you today? You know, who has read this, this? What do you think of this? Make it about them. And then you create that desire. Okay? The next slide. I can also know by checking your analytics. Who has ever checked their Instagram analytics? Want it? No. Okay. What about your Facebook analytics? Do you even know Facebook has analytics insights? Okay. There are so, so many people haven't checked. Okay. Now I've brought it to your notice. You actually have analytics. It is called insights on Facebook. It is called. Um, it is that bar. 
that bar icon on Instagram. Click on it. Go and check. You see the statistics about you know your page, your audience, their age, where they are following you from. If you click on your content, you see your best post, which ones are performing the best. And that shows you that this is what your audience you know, is interested in. And God help you if your top performing posts are videos from Insta blog or something from somewhere okay so that tells you that you need to retract you need to think about those posts and do similar posts more of that okay so the last a is action you've created the desire you've given them more and more and more and more and more what do you want them to do do you want them to accept christ do you want them to follow you? Do you want them to share? Do you want them to buy? What do you want them to do? And I say this to you know, my um, clients who have trained with me. Any post you write without a call to action is just a story. Okay, so if you're going, if you're going to make people do something, you have to ask them. We are human beings, very intelligent, but sometimes we just don't know until you tell us. So you have to tell them, what do you want them to do? That is your call to action, CTA. Make sure you always put it there, okay? And then tell people how to find you. And these platforms have made you know, that very easy. If you put in your email address, your, num your phone number, your... Even your office address, you have the buttons on your Instagram. There are places on your Facebook um, personal profile or even your page that you can put, you know, those information. So help people find you, okay? When they think about a Christian writer, when they think about a Christian writer who writes for so so and so, let them be let um, let them be able to come to you first and say, oh, I know about this person, and when we're looking for you, let us be able to find you. If you know if you can be found, go and Google your name. Yeah, yeah go and Google your name. I, have you Googled? Who has Googled? <laughs> You've go, you, uh, you Googled. Go and Google your name. That is when you know that you're not even trying on the internet as, as a whole. Okay, go and Google your name. All right, the, the, the next one. Okay, and this is my own addition to that formula, okay? This is where we all miss it most, most of the time. We gather these followers, you know, we build these communities on social media, and the next time we release, you know, probably a poem or book or something, we have to now start from the scratch again, building. Why? Because we've been thinking in the pool mentality. When whatever you're doing on social media, you're supposed to be thinking funnel mentality. Do you understand? The funnel is very large at the top and very, very, you know, narrow at the, at the bottom. Now, the narrow bottom, those are the people who are your loyal fans. Those are the people that will continue to buy from you over and over and over again. There is a saying that um, an old customer is easier to sell to than a new one. If you bought something from me before, I don't need to cajole you like this other person who has never bought anything from me before. Okay, if I have read your books or your articles or whatever you've released, I know you now. I'm interested. Do you understand? I want to keep reading from you. But if I'm new, you have to convince me with the first one. You have to convince me with the second one. You have to convince me with the third one. There are seven touch points before a customer buys from you. It means I have to convince you seven times before I can say, oh, I'm in love with this person, and whatever book he releases, I'm going to be there. There is a man, a guru in marketing, his name is Russell Bronson. Um, I went through all his funnels. I'm in his list. He releases one book in the midnight. I know about it. I'm downloading and buying. And that is the way it should be when it comes to Christian writers. 
Do you understand? And how do you build this, you know, community of loyal fans? Don't just leave them on social media. Social media is fickle. Hello? Instagram glitched for a few seconds, and I had people in my, you know, um, DM shouting, ah, what is happening? Oh, it was as if it was rapture. <laughs> Even I was wondering, have I been left out? No, no, I can't. Do you understand? People, people were almost having heart attacks just because Instagram glitch. They couldn't open their accounts. Start building your email list. At worst, at worst, okay? Use a Google form. You know, give people something, a freebie or something. Tell them to fill the form in exchange for something. Probably a new chapter, one chapter in your new book, or, you know, one chapter in the book you, you sell that is not for free, a juicy uh, chapter, give it to them in exchange for their information. And then you keep it, you transfer it. These are the people you can then now send text messages. This is a crude form. You can now then send them text messages or WhatsApp broadcasts and say, I have a new shinding, you know how. If you're interested, of course they're going to be interested. Okay, because these are your loyal fans. So let's stop thinking pool and start thinking funnel. Okay, as Christian writers, start building. This is what the secular people do. You have um, Kylie Jenner, who, who everybody was just posting now, about to be the youngest billionaire. You, you understand. And where did she start from? from my influence, from my followers. I bet with you, everyone who has bought one lipstick or one powder had to give a email address before they buy. Because that is the only way you can sell and resell and resell over again. And one last thing, while doing God's work, yeah, there's no money in it and all that, but we're eating. Even if it is just $20, how much is $20 now? $20 times 6K. Even if we spend more than that per week, don't we? Okay, at worst. Even if it is just $20, please advertise. Okay, learn how to, if you don't have, if you can't, give it to someone who can and don't just press the boost button there is a way you can really advertise on facebook and you will get enough data to start studying your market to start studying those people you're talking to even if it is just 20 dollars per month okay advertise it exposes you to more people other than those who are following you or those that you know okay Mark is very good with that. He's very, very generous. He will show you to the old world for money. Okay? And we need the old world to hear about the gospel of Christ. All right? So, next slide, please. The old thing is to get seen, to get heard, but to remain true to the gospel of Christ. Okay? Thank you. If you have questions.